and the leadership for this work, as great and austere as the people are in the front of the room, isn't going to come from the front of the room. It's going to come from the back of the room. It's going to come from Abermall Road Elementary. It's going to come from Montclair Elementary. It's going to come from Bain Elementary. And I know it's going to come from Blythe Elementary. As I had an opportunity to sit here with the Blythe community for a little bit before they knew who I was. And I got a chance to sit next to Di Willis. She told me kind of like Di, like Lady Di. She's been serving at Blythe, serving in our community since 2002. This year, she's a pre-K teacher. And she's going to be working to prepare the way for the students who crossed that stage we saw on that screen. And the leadership we're going to need, if you're dependent on the people who are on that stage or the front of the room, you're looking to the wrong people. The leadership's going to come from the person who's right next to you. Go look at the person right next to you. Go, just go look at them. Yeah, y'all look good. Y'all look good. Because I wasn't just sitting amongst you for theatrical effects, although that was my initial intention. But it was really meant to be representative. It was meant to be representative to recognize that the people you need to look to are right next to you. The leadership is right there amongst you because we have a shared opportunity, an opportunity to do something amazing and great and to build on the foundation that was laid through many years and hundreds of educators who have been in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools before some of us thought of coming here. And I want to kind of lay the groundwork for our discussion about this opportunity to talk about a report that was released last fall, back in October, by an organization called The New Teacher Project, known by its acronym TNTP. They released a report looking at five school systems, four school districts, one charter network, called The Opportunity Myth. And then looking across these five school systems, none of which were Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, they followed students and interviewed them. They surveyed and interviewed teachers. They looked at hundreds of classrooms worth of instruction and reviewed thousands, thousands of pieces of student work. And across all of those analyses, they found that there were four things that were particularly meaningful for a student's experience. Great appropriate instruction, strong, great appro access to great appropriate standards, I should say, in work, strong instruction, deep engagement, and teachers with high expectations. They found that those four things, affirming what you probably knew in your field knowledge, make all the difference. And when we look at these things, what we recognize is these things are actually synonymous with what you see in our strategic plan. We're talking about the, the instructional core, talking about the rigor of the content, the skills of teachers, and the role of the student as learner with the actual work, the actual work, the actual work the kids are getting right there in the middle. And when we talk about these things, once again, the content talks about the level and complexity of the content. Not just the subject, but high-level teaching of high-level content. It's talking about the teacher having the skills and knowledge, and one might even add the disposition that high expectations has mattered most. And then talking about the role of the student, the student as independent learner, not passive dependent learner. That these three elements we know through field knowledge and empirical research makes a difference for students. But what was particularly interesting about this Opportunity Myth Report that TNTP released last year is they found when you had these four things here present, they had a remarkable impact on all students. But for those who are farthest behind, it had the most impact. And allow me to walk you through this real quick. I'm going to click here. There we go. What this represents from right to left are those four areas. Talking about grade appropriate work, strong instruction, deep engagement, high expectations. And what you see here are the number of months of additional learning that a student experienced if they had access to any of these four. And what you see here is that if a student had access to strong level content or high expectations, they had almost eight months of additional learning. 
almost eight months, almost a full academic year of additional learning just by making sure that on a daily basis they had access to grade appropriate content and they had access to you with high expectations. And for some of us that might seem counterintuitive to build on what Brian said that sometimes we figure we have to meet students where they are down here, but actually the research says if we meet them up where they are, if we bring them up here, and meet them here and then bring them, give them access to that content, it makes all the difference. This was for students who were two to three grade levels below where they were starting the school year. So this gives us an opportunity to confront two things that if we take advantage of it, we're going to be able to do wonderful things for our community and for the students we serve. One is this idea of standards aligned instruction. If we can create access this, be it through the curriculum that you're going to adopt, through the lessons that you regularly prepare, through whatever you do, if you can have high expectations and give students this access, we'll be able to move mountains. Now this number, I want to introduce you. Everybody say 97. 97. That didn't sound like everybody. Everybody say 97. 97. Everybody say 24. 24. Say 97. 97. Say 24. Y'all are a good class. So when I look at these, these two percentages represent two different things. Last, no, actually in 2018, the state of North Carolina administered a thing called the, uh, the Teacher Working Condition Survey. I'm sorry you had to take that, but it was something many of y'all probably took it. And about 72% of our teachers responded to the Teacher Working Condition Survey administered by the state. In the Teacher Working Condition Survey, they asked the question, and you had a chance to either disagree, disagree strongly, agree, or agree strongly. Not, then they asked this question. The, st the curriculum that I teach at my school is standards aligned. The curriculum that I teach at my school is standards aligned. 97% of teachers that responded agreed or strongly agreed with that statement in 2018. 97% of teachers who responded in CMS agreed or strongly agreed with that statement that, their stand, that the curriculum they taught was standards aligned. However, we worked with the new teacher project, TNTP, last fall and had them go to a representative sample of schools and classrooms and actually observe what we were teaching. When they looked, they found that 24% of the lessons they observed were standards aligned. So we have this conundrum where what we thought was standards aligned, almost through consensus, only was standards aligned in one of four instances. A disconnect. So no one is questioning your individual or our collective integrity, intentions, or aspirations. No one is questioning our collective or individual capacities, desires, or ambitions for students but what we thought and what we were doing were not identical. Does that make sense to y'all? So now we have to grapple with another opportunity, and that's the opportunity of belief. What do we really believe that kids can do? And more so, what do we really believe about each other as professionals and practitioners? When TNTP did their national study, they asked teachers what they thought about standards. And 82% of the teachers that they interviewed nationally in those five school systems said, I believe in higher standards, 82%. However, a minority of respondents, 44%, said that, was the, that those high standards were for their kids. Let me state that otherwise. The majority of teachers who responded said, I believe in high standards, just not for these kids. Once again, this wasn't Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, but I dare to suggest that as an industry, we grapple between what we think is best and what we think our kids can do, particularly if they come from a background where they've been economically disadvantaged, particularly if their first language isn't English and they're not speaking English yet when they enter, especially if sometimes they live in communities that look and act different than my own. So standards line instruction and belief are things we're going to have to grapple with together. Everybody say together. together. 
Because moving forward, that's how we're only way we're going to be able to do this. And this type of strategy is only going to be as strong as you are. I'm going to say that again. That was noteworthy. You can tweet me. This strategy or this approach will be only as strong as you are and as we are together. We have a lot to learn together and a lot to unlearn. And let me say this loudly and clearly, that there are no experts on this stage right now or in the minutes and hours to come. The experts are in the room. And we're going to have to learn together from each other. Is that all right? We're going to have to learn together. And we're going to have to take on some change. And the thing that I hate about change is change is hard. Change is hard. But the thing is, some of us like change that looks like this. <laughs> Linear change on a nicely paved road into the sunset. Ah. But our change, excuse my language, Ms. McCray, our change ain't this change. This ain't our change. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This change isn't our change. Our change might look like this. A winding road, uphill, sometimes no end in sight, and you can't always tell where the turns are coming from. In some dimes, in some parts of our district, change is going to look like this. Uphill, barren, and you're going to be like, Lord, how did I get into this? If you, if you take the wrong turn, you're scared you're going to fall off the cliff. This is what our change is going to feel like. But if we can make sure we approach this together, not just together, central office, schools, but together with the people who are next to you, you'll find out that there's amazing things we can do, and you already know it. But the key thing I want you to keep in mind as you leave this auditorium today, among some of the things our speakers are going to share, is how we show up can impact how students show up. How we show up can impact how students show up. So there's lots of things that are outside of our influence that we cannot control, that we can, cannot impact, and we wish we could. There's things that some of our students experience and see that they should never see, never experience, never know about. But how we as educators show up can impact how they show up. And I want to show you a, slight, a short video that exemplifies this point. How would somebody do that? Please go into the classroom, no talking, quietly. Hey, Ms. Myrna, how are you doing? We need you inside. How do you think that makes us feel? I forgot my number. What's your name? Jordan. What's your last name? Carter. Go ahead. School is hard enough. Come on in, sit down quietly at your desks, and begin writing. This kind of stuff just makes it harder. I said quietly, please. Who's talking? Is it you, Sophie? Don't let it be you. Don't believe me? Please just watch. I'm not up here for me. I'm up here for you. Pay attention, OK? Now, somebody answer me. Somebody needs to answer me really fast. Every time we're ignored or yelled at or silent, the teacher takes away what's possible. No horseplay, no running, and especially no talking. Moment by moment. Ms. Garrity. Your students' behavior yesterday in the lunchroom, it was terrible. Next time, silent lunch. Did you hear that? Stay in line and catch a bubble. I'm not playing. If this is education, we're in trouble. Bye, Ms. McGarrity. Frederick Douglass said, once you learn to read, you'll be forever free. The way it is now, two of the three of us will never be able to really read. It doesn't have to be this way. Hey, Jordan, how you doing? Good. Good. Everyone we meet throughout our day can make a difference. I've been waiting for you to arrive. All the difference. Good morning, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How are you? Good. Go ahead and put your number in. Talk with us. I don't know my 
Not S. That's okay, I'll look it up for you. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. All right. Have Teach us what we need to know. That's how we get smarter. Well, good morning, Sophie, Janicia, and Jordan. And when you talk with us and teach us, give us bigger and bigger words. Now what I'd like you to do, children, is turn around and converse with your neighbor and discuss where the mother might have gone. Words that we can use to read and understand. She is prey for eagles, so she hunts at night. And that will take us places we can never reach without them. Remember, we're entering the learning zone. Now how can we show our respect to the children and teachers who are working? We can walk quietly. Yes. Okay, kids, so what I'd like you to do is continue writing your narrative, documenting your emotions, if you were the baby owl and your mother abandoned you in the nest. What can you do? Learn all that you can so that you can challenge us to be our best. We would have stayed and assisted them in whatever they needed. Share yourself with us and show us how to share ourselves with others. Give us courage. Give us compassion. Help us find our own voices so we can become who we are meant to be. Why would you want to silence us? Come on. Thank you for all you do. You make the difference in great and small ways. Thank you.